If you Google circular panoramas, you can see the variety of cool images you can make and the amazing thing is how easy it is to do. To get started, shoot a landscape of something with interesting details and varying heights of objects. You don't have to shoot a panorama per se, but keeping the basic format of a landscape in mind will help you compose your image. You can turn virtually any image into a circular panorama, but I've found that wide-angle landscapes make the best ones. Skylines, in particular, make great panoramas. Once you've chosen an image, open it in Photoshop and get started on your piece. It's very important that your image be nice and square with regard to how it's oriented in landscape mode. In other words, be sure the horizon of the image you choose isn't skewed or sloped to either side like it is in this shot. Note that this thing kind of slants to the left. Before beginning, you need to fix this. The first step to squaring up your image is to square it up so it's parallel to the plane. Do this by first selecting all of the image and then rotating it in free transform mode by going to Edit, Free Transform. Now, move your cursor until the curved arrow shows up in the corner. Click and drag this until the horizon is as close as you can get to 180 degrees, like so. Now double click to set the image down. Next, take the rectangular marquee and crop the photo as tightly as you can. After you've done that, go ahead and go to Image, Crop. There are a number of ways to manipulate your image while creating a circular panorama, and I encourage you to experiment until you end up with something you really like. There are two distinct effects you'll get in your final image, and I'll show you the difference between the two while using the same image. I'm using this shot of San Francisco I took a few years ago because it's nice and crisp and has a lot of varieties of shapes and sizes in the various buildings. I'll begin by doing what I call a quickie to show you just how easily you can make one of these things. The crux of this whole process may be found in your menu under Filter, where you will then go to Distort and Polar Coordinates. You'll then get a preview window showing two checkbox options at the bottom, Rectangular to Polar or Polar to Rectangular. Your best choice is rectangular to polar. You can preview what the image will look like by zooming out the preview thumbnail until you can see the whole image like so. Now go ahead and click OK to render the image. What we have here is what I call an any, a panorama that sort of protrudes towards the center of the ellipse or egg shape and not outward. This is not always the best possible effect, but depends on your own personal taste and how it looks in the end. There's also a visible seam that results whenever you make one of these things and it's the result of the front end of the image meeting up with the back end. You can see the seam most obviously in the sky here, where the clouds don't line up properly. This needs to be fixed, so it's time to use the skills you've learned to doctor it up. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool here and try to make a smoother transition in the seam between the two unlike areas of the sky. This is going to be a bit sloppy, but of course you'll take your time and do a perfect job. Once you're happy with your image, go ahead and save it. So what I'm calling an any panorama is one of the two distinct effects you'll get when making these. Now let's go ahead and try the other one, an Audi. I'll revert this image and start with my original image. This time I'm going to rotate the image 180 degrees by going to Image, Image Rotation, 180 degrees. Now I'll go to the Polar Coordinates filter again and render the image. This time the panorama is projecting outward and the sky has become the entire background, which looks very cool. Note that the seam is really noticeable in this panorama, which means it's going to take a bit more work to clean it up. But before I do, I think I'll experiment with rotation of the entire image to see if I can improve the overall appearance. After a couple of tries, I think I like this one the best, and the sky looks more natural. Now I'll go ahead and do a quick cleanup of the sky, save the thing, and that's it for my Audi. Another thing you may want to try is to modify your image into a square format before you do anything else. To do this, go to Image, Image Size, and make the width and height the same value. Also be sure to uncheck Constrain Proportions before you do this. This will distort the image, but then you're going to distort it anyway even more, so what the heck. Now I'll go ahead and rotate the image 180 degrees, since I think the Audi looks best for this particular image, and now I'll click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to Image, Distort, Pull the Coordinates, and apply that filter. There you go. It looks a lot better than before. Now go ahead and clean up that seam and you're all done. Like I said before, don't be afraid to experiment with these things and being happy with the first one you try. Another option is to clean up the image some before applying the filter. 
which can make fixing the seams a lot easier. Well, that's all there is to it. Until next time, have fun. Thank you.